Good morning and welcome back to the woods. And it's raining and this wasn't forecast yesterday. But as soon as I got here, it started to rain. So I put the roof up and obviously I got a light of fire. Now I've got my new bush tool again because I really want to make a nice big pile of feather sticks with it. Obviously that does not make very good viewing in here just shaving feather sticks but that's the plan and with me I come to the woods I do what I want and I film it never really got much of a plan but I did have a bit of a plan today but that may go out of the window because I wanted to do a friction fire a two stick method where you get two sticks flatten the sides off a bit tie them together and bow drill between the two sticks now I've done it before in the past and I've had success and I've had no success that's not really the weather for it today but I'm going to attempt it anyway I brought my silky zubat with me today but first things first I need to cut the nice round not free try to be not free anyway Nice and straight green. Rain's easing off a bit now, which is good. And I've got plenty of split wood for the fire. The first lot I did is going to be the base and first stage fuel, well. And I've just done kindling and feather stick wood. So I've got a nice pile of split wood. And I'm going to choose the best six pieces now for feather sticks. That's got a knot in it, so we leave that alone. Pretty much knot free, nice and straight. One down, five to go. Obviously I'm not making these super amazing, 
because they're going up in flames. I only need to make that one with the tiny curls, as I call it, my igniter stick. On the last few strokes, I changed the angle of the cut. So instead of going like that, which is easier for me, I went like that. And that's to put them curls right there, because I'm going to attempt to do them holding the ferro rod on the feather stick lighting technique, because it's wet. Why not? So there's my bundle of feather sticks. I'm going to Split a few of these down now with the knife just to get them a little bit finer and I should be good to go. I'll probably fill my pot up first so I don't waste any heat. So the pot is hanging on the tripod straight away and as soon as I get some flames I put it straight on so I don't lose any heat. When you're doing this, take a look at the way the tree has grown. You see the lines are going that way. <clears throat> where we split down that way, it makes life a lot easier. Although, because that's thick, I'll do a split down the middle first. See, there's a bit of, more of an effort there. Now I'm going to come down here. These few little things make life easier and the main thing that makes life easier about splitting is a knot free chunk. Cut it knot free in the first place. I think I'm going to go now and get my pot on the tripod. The last thing that comes out from under the tap is the igniter stick. <clears throat> Obviously, you can put the pot above the fire a lot earlier before you even light it and that'll give it a bit of shelter from the elements. Well, I'm going to have a well-deserved cup of tea now, as soon as that's boiled. As you can hear, it's now tipping down. 
I'm just both finished my cup of tea off and the fire needs some attention. It's burning well. Well, it was a couple of minutes ago before it started oiking it down. So I'm going to have a look in my wood pile now for three or four nice flat splits and I'm going to put them on top. They'll do just fine. Only I had a fire box and I could burn them there. Well, I'm going off into the badass bush you now to look for a piece of uh, dead standing willow to do this uh, friction fire set. Not really the weather for it. But what I'm looking for is a piece of dead standing as straight as possible, about three foot long. So I can have a foot long drill and I can have two pieces to splash together which are about a foot long as well basically just over thumb thickness right, so I'm going to look for some in I'm not going to take you with me because it's raining and my camera isn't waterproof very sorry I am wet and I am stickless. I knew it was too soon to change my uh, into my summer boots. Oh well, yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything. Everything was either alive and starting to bud or rotten. So that's out of the window. I have to leave that one till another day in another spot. And I'm certainly not going down into the bayou because I don't want to go balls deep in muck again. I better sort this fire out and have a cup of tea. Well, that was a shame. Bit of an anti-climax. I was really looking forward to doing that. Obviously, I wanted to try out my bow drill divot. I know it's going to work, but I wanted to try it out anyway. Well, we'll have to do that again. All I got for my trouble was wet feet and wet trousers. So, I thought to myself, well, no point cutting the video short, I might as well talk about something. So I think I'll talk about trousers, seeing as I just mentioned them. Well, the e-glide among you may have noticed that for the last six months I haven't been wearing Farrell Ravens I've been wearing Haley Context uh, first pair I bought are the ones I'm wearing now which are Woodsman's trousers and I'm very pleased with them and then a couple of months back I also bought a pair of Pilgrim trousers and I like them too um, I think they're great, nothing wrong with them they dry quick they're very lightweight, but they're pretty tough. i got to say, when I go off into the badass bush over there, it's full of thorns and uh, brambles. And I really go through them. I don't mess about. I don't try and go around them or anything. I just go through them, save going around. And they're great. i got one little burn hole in these, but most of my fall ribbons are full of burn holes anyway. Um... I did buy into the Fall Raven thing a few years back and I got four pairs. Sadly, only one pair now fit me because I've put weight on. But they are great trousers, but I really don't think you need to spend a hundred pounds. I don't know what they are in dollars, they're probably about a hundred and fifty or hundred and seventy dollars. There's no need. These Haley Context are great. 
thing is, for years, wore combat trousers for years, until the Fall Raven thing came in. And there's nothing at all wrong with combat trousers. They're great. They're tough as old boots. They've got nice big cargo pockets. But not everybody wants to wear combat trousers. Um, these ones I'm wearing now, the woodsman's trousers, have got knee pads with Velcro underneath. And the knee pads stay in place. They're stitched and shaped. And I've made some knee pads out of kip pad, kip mat. And they're shaped as well. And they are great. And this is the downfall of the pilgrim trousers. They do not have knee pads. And I like knee pads. Obviously, I'm kneeling on the floor quite often, lighting fires and doing things. So for me, knee pads are a must. I'd say the cut on the pilgrim trousers are more comfortable. Now, I'm not your perfect 32-32. I'm a 38-30. So I'm not perfect. So nearly every pair of trousers I buy you know, apart from jeans and things which you can get in a short leg. Outdoor trousers don't come in short legs, so I get to shorten everything. And my fall ribbons I had professionally shortened, but these ones I didn't bother, I just cut them off and stitched them myself. Use that iron on thing and then stitch them various places and they're fine. But the pilgrim trousers, the cut on them is quite large, so they're very comfortable, but they're a bit flappy. And when you get them, they've got cords in them, elasticated cords. So that's fair enough, but I've cut mine off. So they are a bit flary, but they're very comfortable, especially with the high back portion. They've got a nice high cut, so you can get your belly in instead of hanging out. And that's the only problem with these ones, the woodsman's trousers. I find them a little bit low. But they're great. i got no complaints to them. I think I've used the saw pocket once. Because most of my saws are too big to go in there anyway. So that's not a deal breaker for me. The other ones, the pilgrims, have got cargo pockets. Which sit further back on your leg, on your thigh. And they're great. I can, I can put a bottle in there and not even notice them. Very good. So if you combine the two pairs of trousers together... So they had that less flary cut at the bottom of the woodsman and the knee pads and everything else of the pilgrim. You would have the perfect pair of woods trousers in my opinion. But there we are, I think the pilgrim must be meant for walking and the woodsman just meant for being in the woods. Yes, so that's my bit on trousers. I wish I'd worn my darnness today because my feet are soaking. I was just hoping it would be summer. It's not yet. Well, that's about it, really. Sorry if I bored the living daylights out of you. But, you know, it, it's a bit of a topic of conversation these days. Oh, are you in Falleravens? Overpriced. Nice kit, but overpriced. One more thing. With the knee pads on the fall ribbons, they come in underneath and they haven't got that velcro closure. I often find that my knee pad is sticking out to the bottom, one corner of it, and that's not particularly good. I don't like that. But yeah, I like these Hairly Contexts. I like, I like my two smocks as well. They're great. I wish I'd had one on today because this is soaking and I'm absolutely boiling in this shirt. There we are, wrong choice of clothes. Didn't expect it to rain. Well, I'm waiting for my fire to die out now. Not much left of it. I got three sticks. I'm gonna make some feathers, leave them here for next time. Wanna play with my new knife. But thank you very much for watching. Always appreciate your comments. And as you know, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Oh, and one more thing, somebody's been commenting on the way I say fire, that I say fire. Well, that's my accent. So, here's one for you. Fire. Because <laughs> I'm assuming you're from the States. Until the next time, goodbye. Ta-ra. If you want to leave a comment on what you think about trousers, do so. We can have a chat about it.
Oh, you're still here, are you? Okay, fair enough. I've got so much time on my hands now, I'm aiming at the perfect feather stick. Because when I want to light a fire, I tend to do them really quick. But when I'm just sitting around like this, I can just take my time and make perfect ones. Now I did get a comment last week from a guy who said he wants a knife for me and um, he's not on Instagram and there's a few people have commented. Well I have in the past put a couple up on my notice board but when they're sold I get rid of it so you won't see it again. But when I've got two uh, Moskohansky knives available I will put them on so you will get first dibs before anybody on Instagram. But at the moment, I'm back in work part-time and the knives are going to be coming out slow. I've got a list of people, which I didn't mention last week, I've got a list of people that I've got a contact, but I'm not taking commissions. Because I'm back in work, it's just too stressful trying to balance work, other things, and knife making. I don't mind doing the knife making, that's easy. But I am the kind of person, I don't want to let people down, so I will get stressed on commissions. So after I've done what I've got to do now, don't ask me, because whatever I make will be on Instagram, and I'll put it on the notice board on here on YouTube, and, well, first in gets it, basically. And if I do ever manage to go full-time, I'll probably take on commissions then. Yeah, so I'm going to carry on with this now. RWL34. It's a great steel. I like it. I like it. But there's just something about door one. I do like carbon. I think for a bushcraft knife, I'd say O1, RWL34 and CPM3V. They're my three favourites. I'm off now. I'm going to finish this off. And I think I'll have another cup of tea. There's a bit of life left in the fire. And the kettle's on. There's just enough water in it. So I'll have another cup of tea. And then I'll go. Come on, you son of a bitch, boil. I don't like that method, it's a load of shit. And snap the thing. That hippie guy, he lasted for a rasserum rod as well. What an asshole. Asshole. He built some kind of shitty cabin. It was crap, man. Last season, that guy won a million bucks. He was good. He was good. But irreparable lung damage from that shelter. Man, that was bad shit. No, we won't put that on. That's fucking crap. <laughs> Funny thing, I was actually... I did actually get an email from a producer from a loan asking me if I wanted to play for the show I sent a message back saying unfortunately I'm on the wrong continent and my family commitments would not allow I'd never go on that show, man it's too hard I'd miss my cup of tea <laughs> stay awesome <laughs> 